I'm going to do something a little bit different with this video. I get a lot of requests for the same thing, which is from people that have an IT background, but not a math background, and asking to explain the math in simplistic terms for someone with that particular background. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm not going to assume that you don't know anything about computers. I'm going to assume that you know a lot about computers, but you know very little about math. And then so I'm going to frame this video and all of this context specifically for you as the IT person trying to get into AI uh, and understanding the math behind AI itself. So starting off, let's frame neurons as logical gates. A uh, neural network is like a collection of interconnected logical gates or units that work together. Each neuron receives inputs, performs a simple transformation on those inputs, which involves weighted sums, and passes the result to the next layer. This is similar to how systems process inputs and outputs. Using weights as parameters, each connection between neurons has a weight, which is just a number that decides how much influence one neuron has on another. It's like tuning a parameter in a code or configuring a system. So breaking down exactly what this means here. So when we're talking about a neural network and a connection of logical weights, we're talking about this here. These, these which you're, I'm assuming that you've seen before, this input layer and output layer. And then you've probably seen it more as like uh, the full, like this, right? Like something like this. And then so each one of these little individual dots is what we're referring to as a neuron in this instance or a logical gate, right? But these little, these little dots, they store more information than just binary, like on, off, yes, no, one, zero, one, right? They can store um, Tokyo, Japan, London, um, animal names, etc. Right? And then the, these, whatever is stored in here is uh, when information passes over the network. So each one of these is a, is a weight. Let's say that X1 is Tokyo, X2 is Japan and uh, or uh, yeah, London, uh, X3 is Los Angeles, uh, and X4 is Paris. Uh, and then we want to know um, what is the capital of France. And then so what's going to happen is that it's going to pass over all of these weights, uh, the input layer of X1 through 4, and it's going to say, do I fire on X1? No. Do I fire on X2? No. Do I fire on X3? No. Do I fire on X4? Yes. And then in this instance, it's going to fire on X4, and then it will give us the output of Paris, right? which is what we would want in this instance. And that's very straightforward, exactly how it works, right? Uh, and then so within that, it's important to note this second part, this weights as parameters, that like that actual information, right? Like the Paris, Los Angeles, Japan, it's not necessarily that particular information like isn't stored uh, within the the weight itself, right? The, that is stored within the connections between the weights. So we have this connection between X4 and A3, and that's where Paris would live. And the connection between uh, X3 and A2, that's where Tokyo would live, etc., right? And then so that gives you kind of the, the uh, idea and breakdown as to kind of how this neural networks work and the math behind neural networks on a high level. Uh, and then on the right hand side here, you can see, and we'll dive deeper into these, but these are kind of what live inside of the little individual circles, right? This little, these little math equations and these tables. It's like all of these individual circles are a bunch of these individual tables. And then on the, uh, on the lines is like a single line of the table, like a single extraction of the table, uh, like Tokyo, but it's represented as a string of numbers, right? Uh, Japan, or <laughs> whatever it is, uh, dog, cat, etc., right? And then so what determines which ones of these turn on and which ones don't during that sequence, right? And that's kind of an important step. And then so that step is called the activation function. And activation functions are rules, uh, simple rules, that help a neuron decide whether to fire or not. They convert the weighted sum into a final output, and you can compare it, th it to a threshold check, such as an if-else function, but it's continuous. So it's always firing, always going, right? 
Uh, and then so this is just giving you the different examples, right? And then the different activation functions will change the equation and then change the function and then change the output depending on the activation function, right? So if we have uh, different, if we have Thailand, Jamaica, and Dubai in this instance as our activation functions, depending on which one we utilize, uh, which activation function we utilize, the model will point towards one of these three and it will point to different ones utilizing different activation functions, utilizing different math, right? Uh, and then that's where it comes in and like kind of that more than binary. Like, so like if it's more than binary, then how do we decide within it what to use. That's where the activation function comes in, and that's why we have it. And then so diving a bit deeper and uh, exploding this out a bit more. Uh, neural networks use arrays, which are vectors, and 2D arrays are matrices uh, to process the inputs. So going back up to here, uh, this, these, like these numbers that live inside of the dots, that's what we're talking about here, right? And then so um, this is exactly like the, the model performs math on all of this, on all of these functions, these functions and these tables. It just, you know, it's adding, adding one way or adding the other way or subtracting one way or subtracting the other way. And then it's going back and forth and doing that type of math. And uh, each, so a vector is a list of values and each value corresponds to an input feature and the matrix is a table of values. So a vector is the individual value and then the matrix is the tables. So you can have um, a, a, a array of arrays is a way to think of it, right? Like, so think of a vector as an array and then a matrix as an array of arrays. <laughs> That's the best way and easiest way to think about this equation. And then within this equation, you can multiply either the, the, you can multiply the box itself or the contents of the box or some of the contents in the box. And then the contents of the box can be structured in uh, vertically or horizontally, right? <laughs> and then so all of this gives you different levers that you can pull. Um, and all of the, that's what all of this comes down to, right? Is levers that are being pulled within them. <laughs> that's all like so uh, millions of levers. Uh, and then we're adding within each one of these mathematical steps more and more levers. And then so looking at uh, weighted sums as a programming loop, so to demystify the concept of uh, the weighted sum, which is essentially the, the core of a neural network, let's break it down as something akin to a uh, loop in code. Uh, and then so you have uh, essentially your straightforward looping logic, you have your output, which is defined by your inputs, right? And then so output is defined by input times weight. Uh, and then that it gives you your output and very straightforward loop function, right? Um, and then so this function is exactly what the models do when it's going through and it's trying to process and learn information. It's just looping the information through its weights. But it doesn't do it through typical normal math, which is what we see here on the top, right? So it doesn't go like one times two and then two times two and then three times two. Uh, it goes and it creates vectorization. It's vectors, right? So it pulls from those tables. So if it has a table of one, two, three, it will just pull two, 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 two from another table. And then that's, and then it will create a vector of two, four, six. And then so it's always staying in vector, right? Like, so it's not like, it's not going to ever be uh, one times two and then two times two and then three times two. It's always going to be one, two, three times two, two, two equals two, four, six. So it, like, it always stays in those groups of tables. And then again, you can do it both vertically and horizontally. And then so... Uh, Activation functions and looking at these as simple code, when you write them out and you utilize them like uh, within Python or anything that you're utilizing for a neural network, it, you literally write it out as code, right? Um, and then so um, they, you can look at them as doing different things. So you have looking at two different activation functions, the sigmoid or the ReLU function. The ReLU function, uh, you can write it out and think of it like as a straight switch, uh, whereas the ReLU function is saying only pass when there's positive values. So these different functions have different logic behind them. They're different logical gates, right? So rather than just like um, a pure on-off logic, they have logic period, any logic. <laughs> and then so 
Uh, the last two concepts to talk here, first of all, is gradient descent. So talking about gradient descent, imagine gradient descent as a search algorithm. The neural network is trying to learn by adjusting its weights, and gradient descent is the method by which it finds the optimal set of weights that minimize the error. Errors or loss are measured using a loss function like mean squared error, and the goal is to adjust the weights step by step in the direction that decreases the error. So if you change a weight slightly, the error will change slightly. And then so gradient descent checks which direction reduces the error and then moves in that direction. So it's like a dial, right? You're dialing to the left, dialing to the right, trying to figure out exactly where that true equation and where that, that, that right equation is. Um, and then when you see loss graphs, like you always see it going down, and you always want the loss to go down uh, because loss is, again, correlated to error, mean squared error, right? And then so if you have a high loss rate, that means that the model is getting a lot wrong. And then so you want that to go down because you want the model to increasingly get more and more right answers as opposed to wrong answers. And then, generally speaking, when it comes to machine learning, uh, we never get to zero, and then we no, we're not concerned, and we don't. It would be very bad uh, if we trained a model to the point where it's going back up, right? Where it's creating this actual like V curve. We want just half of it. <laughs> we always want it going down. And then, uh, importantly, to frame this for you, so. All of this is gra graphs, right? And then always think of this, always bring it back to graphs. But we're dealing with 3D graphs and then not 2D graphs. So the actual graphs that we're dealing with look like this illustration here. And then this is exactly why we have things like uh, gradient descent, why we input, like why we put noise into things and things like that, right? Because this is like, so um, this graph, is, this 3D graph has peaks and valleys within it, right? Uh, and especially like look at the like towards the top right of the graph, you can see like a major um, valley uh, within that, like we'll call it a local valley, right? And then so uh, within machine learning, it's a common thing that will happen where if you have a local valley like that, like a deep local valley, perhaps the model explores this area and then it's like, hey, I found this deep local valley this must be as deep as the valley goes. And then so it, it puts that as the maximum, right? And then it will never explore kind of this Mariana Trench right next to it. Uh, and then we never get to that point. Um, and then so that's why we put uh, things to make sure that the model explores all of this area and doesn't just settle and say, hey, here, I found the answer. <laughs> and then so uh, the last concept to go over here is backpropagation, uh, which is uh, backpropagation is a essentially a chain of corrections and fixing errors that occur within this whole entire process, right? Uh, and then so think of it like the model is debugging itself. <laughs> it's flat out what occurs through backpropagation. Uh, and then the debugging process is essentially the network makes an initial guess, that forward pass. The error is calculated as the output. And then so whatever that error is, that error is then what's passed back through the model. And then each weight is adjusted in proportion to how much it contributed to the error. So it's like tracing your code to find which part of the problem program caused the, the bug, and then it fixes that portion of the code, right? Uh, and then that's essentially what backpropagation does. Uh, and then that's all you need to know as far as the math behind that. And then so this is the math behind neural networks explained simplistically in simple terms without actually utilizing math. But we've gone over very high level uh, algebraic and calculus based concepts. And so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thanks very much.